All right. Uh, a couple of you have asked for videos specific to our studies on the lunar solar Sabbath. And after the video I made, which is reasons to consider the lunar solar Sabbath, a lot of you have said, great, I'm considering it now. What's the next step? So uh, I thought we'd just make this really simple. Uh, this is a very short, we're going to keep it to about 10 minutes or maybe less. And we're just going to have a conversation like we usually would. Uh, my dad has written uh, some pieces, some articles on how he has studied. So we're just going to have a conversation about this article. So I will let him present that. Welcome also, to my dad. Also, I'd like to state here, anything we say or try to bring forward, we are not trying to convince anybody of anything. These are studies that we went through. We are convicted on some issues, but it is up to the Holy Spirit to convict each and every one of you, the more searching you do. This particular writing that Should I... write first? Well, this is part of it. My prayer goes in my writing. Great. But, okay. This particular one was uh, titled, Were We Meant to Keep Time or Was Time Meant to Keep Us? I do start out with a little bit of a presentation and then we go into prayer, so... Why don't we pray together? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pause now and ask that you would be a part of this video, ask that you would guide our conversation and uh, the understanding of anybody who takes the time to know you more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. This one starts out, it says, Was a being who was created to live forever designed to keep time? In this thesis, we will embark on a journey through the Bible to discover and reveal how Elohim proposed to keep our days, weeks, and months straight. Let us discover what the creator of the world intended for us to use as a timepiece. Knowing that he crafted us to live forever, do you think Elohim desired us to count seconds, minutes, and hours the way we keep time today? Time as established to 60 seconds equating to a minute, 60 minutes fulfilling an hour, and 24 hours determining the day was introduced in Babylon and contrived for a finite amount of time. In Elohim's timetable, there were always 12 hours in the day. John 11, 9 um, states, And the light of each day was separated by the darkness of night. In other words, the 12 hours remained the same every day, whether it was a long or a short-lit day. Instead of fluctuating by the length of the sun light through the day. According to Strong's Concordance... I'm going to pause you really quick. Okay. So, first question, um, why do you use Elohim when talking well, here? I did pick up a Bible that does actually use the word, the name of the Father, as it is stated in the original writings of the uh, Bible. But the reason I don't use God as often, I do so some people will understand, but God to some people mean a trinity, or they talk about it as... Every time God is mentioned, they're talk, thinking a triune God in their mind. And most often when God is mentioned, it was an individual. And he, and he used specific names, or the writers of the Bible used specific names for God, and even different names for God in different times. So it is, so God, the word God in the English vernacular is encompassing, uh, yes, our understanding of God, but also... Um, pagan understanding of God, right? Like Very true. God can, the word God can equate to many different places, whereas Elohim or Yahweh or Adonai, Adonai yeah. like these are the names of God and they are um, the original language. But also because we're talking about creation, Elohim is used in the creation story, right? Correct. In Genesis. Correct. And then I just want to also bring up the, the word used for day. It says, according to the Strong's Concordance, day, which is the word yom in Hebrew, came from the original root or etymology of yom, meaning the lit part of the day or the heat of the day. Consequently, when the Bible declared the evening and the morning were the first day, it was referencing the very first time Elohim spoke light into existence. Okay, so you're saying based on both the Strong's Concordance and then also this John 11, verse 9. It says, Jesus answered, Are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. So you're making the point that day equals light. 
Correct. Like just the time that's lit during the day. Not only just the time that's lit, but that's actually what God declared when he said, let there be light in verse uh, five of uh, the first verse of the Genesis. Genesis he 1, says, 5. right, one five, he says, and he called the light day. Okay, you can continue. Okay, when the Bible uses the phrase evening in the morning, it was declaring from noon to dusk, which is evening, and from sunrise to high noon, which is morning. The cycle of time that was ruled by the heat and the light of the sun. And that particular moment of time that designated the day. And that's in Genesis 1.16. It says, remember, God did not call the darkness. I'm sorry. Remember, God called the darkness night. That's Genesis 1.5, which I already mentioned. Mm -hmm. I would like to emphasize, God did not call the darkness evening. He called the darkness night. Thereby, he affirmed that the day Yom consisted of the period regulated by the greater light. The day did not include the darkness. So I think it's important here to also mention, like, as we study, one of the um, difficulties we have is we're working with the English language. So we're working with a new language, in at least in relation to uh, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek which is what the Bible was originally written in. Correct. And so not only are we having to figure out what those words meant in our vernacular, but there's a, different, there's a difference between evening and night. There's a difference between morning and day. There's a different, like all of these words matter. And so yes, like people can be frustrated by how nitpicky that can get, uh, but it's it's still important. It's still worthwhile to look into. And uh, yeah, words are meaningful, especially because John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So words matter. That's my point. Words matter. Amen to that. And this is where I said, um, we, will start, we will have a little prayer for illumination because the greatest light where it says God is light in 1 John 1, 5, so therefore it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding, for she is more profitable than silver and yields better return than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. That's Proverbs 3, verse 5, 13, and 14. And then the title of this is, How did Elohim intend for us to keep monitor time? So on the fourth day of Elohim's creation, the lights in the firmament were instructed to divide the day from the night. This was to designate and differentiate his seasons, the Moed, in the Hebrew and in the Strong's Concordance, concordance I'm sorry, which is H4150, which means appointed times, sacred feasts, and assemblies. Congregation, as creation week came to a close, I'm sorry, the last meaning of Moed is part congregation. Mm -hmm. As creation week came to a close, the only Moed blessed and sanctified was the seventh day of the first week. On that day, Elohim rested. The very first day spoken into existence was when Elohim spoke the words, let there be light. That day, not numbered among the weekdays, connoted new moon day. The lights of the heavens also define his days, months, and years. That's Genesis 1, 14 and 16. So all we have in Genesis... Moed, the only the only time set apart, the only what is it appointed time feast assembly congregation, the only Moed that we're given early on is uh, the Sabbath, the seventh day rest, the seventh day rest. But speaking of that, if you go turn to Genesis one verse five, where he says, "Let there be light," that then he goes on to say, "Let's call the day the light day." That means there was a day created before he started creating anything else. Because that is stated in there. Now, so, so let's start at the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. So created I'm saying light. the first thing right there at that point, that's the day, because God declares that in the next two verses. And God saw the light and it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. So there is already a division. light and darkness, but then we get that the definition. 
God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So evening and the morning were the first day. And there's another little nuance there. Were is a word in Hebrew called haya. And it has two meanings in the Bible. One meaning is it's called uh, followed and the other meaning were. So only God can make a statement that can be true using both those words because when he said, let there be light, he created the first day. So when it says the evening and the morning were the first day, I would say it also could say followed the first day. It followed the first day of the month, but were or was the first day of the week. And then God started filling his creation. Okay, pause. We're going to make a part two. All right, starting part two. I think my daughter left us at a real cliffhanger there, so we'll get right into it, but we will start with prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you be here with us. You said we are only to plant and water, and you will do the growing. Mm. So, Heavenly Father, we pray that you open the minds and hearts of everyone and work on their minds and help us all come to your truth. In Jesus' name. Father, I just want to add that our goal is to know you more. And if uh, this knowledge of you brings us closer to you and allows us to understand the gift of your spirit more, uh, that's what we're looking for. And if not, God, we ask that you would help us to focus on what is important, what is true. Um, but God, here we are asking for you to guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, you went on to write, What if were was meant for the first day of the week? And the translation followed was meant for the first day of the month. Both translations and statements would be true at the same time. And one would then be discerning the word of God as it reads. To repeat, if you read every verse in Genesis 1 that states, and the evening and the morning were, you could deduce the word were for the day of the week and followed for the day of the month. Therefore, the day of the week would be three, and the day of the month would be four, within the same scripture reading. For example, so the evening and the morning were slash followed the third day. That's Genesis 1.13. Because what you're pointing out is that as we understand, and as the ancient Hebrew calendar is set up, there was new moon day, and then the first day of the week. Correct. So there's new moon day, and then there's first day, second day, third day, fourth day. Well, I guess they would still call it the second day of the month, but the first day of the week. Correct. And so there's always that, uh, that a little bit of that dance. Um, and how do we, like, why is that, and maybe this is a harder question than you want to get into, but like, why is that not laid out more clearly? It actually is. When you can actually determine the date of of the Sabbath throughout the Bible, there's about four different places you can do that. It always fell on the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, or the 29th. And yet, it, so like we have those examples, but somewhere, so like in uh, the Hebrew tradition, they were able, they knew how to keep their months. My question is like, how was this that clear to them? Or was it just handed down to them? Because it's just like you could say the calendar today. The calendar today is clear to everyone that lives in the Gregorian calendar. That was so clear to them, they didn't even question it. It mm -hmm. wasn't saying, oh, are we going to do something different? Mm -hmm. God declared it that way. He, he had God created three days. He created new moon days, work days, and Sabbath is what he created. Three types and, of days. Right. And everything fell into that category. Okay. I'll, I'll go Continue. on to read this. Is, <clears throat> Yahweh and his creation... I just said that, created three types of days. Yeah. Um, there were new moon mo, uh, and feast days known, known as Moed days. And uh, that's in Hebrew. It says, new moon days were set apart from all other days. Then six work days and the seventh day Sabbath came up. The week which happens four times throughout the month. So just to be clear, and maybe you're not covering it necessarily here, but new moon and Sabbaths are different um in what what specific ways like first new moon is considered a moed and sabbath is not included in no the it is it's a feast day they were a feast day 
Okay. New moon actually was just another day to start off his month. But it so was he, not. But it was not a normal work day. It wasn't a normal work day, but it was. It allowed you to see that the moon was starting a new month, and therefore the cycles could keep your days. If you never saw the new moon, you wouldn't realize that. Well, the days fall on all these different phases of the moon. And then I would also like to say that, like new moon, as I understand it. Uh, was a day of remembrance. So it was a day of like building the Ebenezer, as we so to so, so speak, like looking back at uh, what worked last month, what was good last month, praising God for what went well, and then also making goals or at least uh, determining what may change for the next month to come. Very much like your New Year's re resolution. So they did, they, they had New Year's every month. Correct. I think God kind knows of. that no one keeps their... Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then it goes on to say, although this is not obvious, it is, however, asserted and verified in Genesis 2, 1 through 4. Do you want to go there and read? Genesis 2, 1 through 4 says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then he blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. I just want to stop there because recently I was having a conversation with somebody who talked about the fact that the Sabbath was not instituted until Exodus, until the Exodus, until the children were brought out of Israel as a form of, well, the Mosaic law, but that uh, that was a sign that God made at that time. Um, but we we aren't given that. We aren't necessarily given in, the, in Genesis that they were told to keep the Sabbath, but here it says God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made and in the same way we talk about how they understood the calendar I would believe that God's children understood his Sabbath like they understood this is a day this is a special day set aside and it's almost like he didn't have to lay it out there he didn't have to like write the Ten Commandments for them because he was with them he understood they they knew his way of keeping time and that included new moon and that included a seven day rest okay. off of that new moon with that i'm going to have you read just verse two of that again and really hang on each word as you read it okay and on the seventh day god ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done right there it says god did two things on the seventh day or he had two seventh days now, I'm going to compare that same verse by through the Septuagint, and that's where I said earlier we will go with that. The Septuagint, you have to understand, was written in Christ's time. It was from uh, Greek scholars that knew the Hebrew lexicon and what they meant by the words, but tried to explain things to the Greeks so the Greeks could understand it. And this is what verse 2 of Genesis 1-4 through 4 reads in the Septuagint. And I will hang on to verses, especially in the second verse. It says, And the heavens and the earth were finished, and the whole world of them. And God finished on the sixth day his works, which he had made. And he ceased on the seventh day from all his works, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he ceased from all his works, which God began to do. This is the book of generations of heaven and earth, when they were made and in the day that the Lord made the heavens and the earth. Notice how the Septuagint said it was the sixth day God finished his work. The Hebrews know that the seventh day was the seventh day of the month, so they kept it as seventh day. It was not declared a seventh day until a week was ended, which God said he then sanctified and blessed. A little nuance, but it should be picked up because it goes on to state, if God finished his work on the seventh day, as I'll continue reading my thing, it says, As stated in Genesis 2-2 in the King James Version of the Bible, according to the Hebrew lexicon, they speak of two seven days. You might think that statement is really taking liberty and is an overreach of the particular scripture. But read it again. It's stated in verse 2, On the seventh day God ended his work, which he had done. One has to ask if God did end his work on day seven of the week, or did God end his work on the sixth day of the week, as the Septuagint affirms? It is both days. I took the liberty of bringing into the study the Septuagint, because the Septuagint is the Greek translation to the Hebrew Bible. This is also uh, it's chronicled in the, uh, 
It says, history chronicles of the 70, 72 Jewish scholars reportedly part in the translation process. You could go to that link, or I could probably put it in the setup, and we could possibly... Uh, <laughs> you could put it in the setup. <laughs> my daughter could put it in the setup. <laughs> okay, I'll continue my reading. The scholars worked in Alex that worked in Alexandria during the reign of Polymia II in Ph Philadelphia. This is 285 to 247 BC. According to the letter of Artis to his brother Philor Philorius, this early collection of scrolls written in Greek were around the, when Jesus was born and began entering the temple to sit for his readings. Wait, are we, what are we talking about right now? We're talking well, about well, This the... is from that text that I said we'll put onto the link. But it's your, so what are you setting up here? You're setting up a, a to show that these to show that this was written when Christ was on the face of the earth. In fact, this particular scroll could have been what Jesus read from when he read in the Bibles, because being in the Greek. Okay. Uh, so you're setting up like the basis of why this scroll and this translation is uh, believable is important. Correct. Okay. Uh, you don't have to read all of that. Okay. I'll then I would just go, uh, tell you what. Then. Um, why don't you go to Numbers 15, 32 through 36? Numbers 15? 32 through 36, correct. I was just going to say that if Christ ended his work on the seventh day, this uh, particular verse is really something to consider. So, 32. Uh, now, while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man gathering sticks on the Sabbath day. And those who found him gathering sticks brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. They put him under guard because it had not been explained what should be done to him. Then the Lord said to Moses, the man must surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones outside the camp. So, as the Lord commanded Moses, all the congregation brought him outside the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died. I go on to write, if God finished his work on the seventh day of the week, we would have a real injustice here. But we know that God is equitable, fair, and just. Therefore, we realize that God could not have finished his work on the seventh day of the week, but he could have on the seventh day of the month. Mm -hmm. A week would not have been declared until it was over, and the week was not over until Elohim proclaimed it to be when he rested thereby affirming the first week and putting into play his heavenly timepiece. Nice. Yeah. Um, is that the last sentence of your thing? I was thing? thinking time. We're up to time. Okay. We'll take that time. <laughs>